Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to give you some tasty, delicious, super easy recipes that you can make using packets of powdered potatoes. All right, if you're new here, my name is Claire. My channel is all about mom stuff, lady stuff, and life stuff. If you like this video, uh, I will leave a playlist down below of some other like Aldi style videos and other recipes that are inexpensive and easy and delicious, and you'll definitely enjoy those if you like this one. Today, the star of the show are these powdered potatoes. You could also use potato flakes. Um, they come in sort of all types. There are larger bags, there are boxes. Basically, instant potatoes is what we are working with today. This is the Chef's Cupboard brand, which of course is from Aldi, my favorite store. But, like, instant potatoes are widely available in all types of brands and grocery stores. These ones were only 69 cents, you guys, so, so super cheap. Um, they come in a lot of different varieties, and you'll see I use a couple different ones uh, throughout these next recipes. Enjoy. <laughs> My first recipe is for gnocchi, which is a delicious Italian potato meats pasta sort of deal. You only need the powdered potatoes, uh, flour, and an egg, and the rest is just to make it fun. I chose basil and onion powder and some boiling water, um, but you could pick whatever spices you got going. You could make it cheesy. You could make it, you know, whatever floats your boat, um, but the first thing I'm going to do is put one cup of my instant potatoes in here and that worked out actually perfectly because there's exactly one cup in the Aldi ones and then I'm also going to mix uh, just one cup of boiling water in there so pretty easy to remember as well and I'm just going to stir that up um, you'll notice that they just turn into mashed potatoes pretty quickly um, and I'm going to add the egg in, but it just seemed really hot. Like, obviously, I put boiling water in there. So um, I decided to beat my egg first, but I didn't want it to turn into a scrambled egg. Uh, so I decided to put my other ingredients um, in the bowl first. Uh, next, I've got some flour. Um, I'm going to use a cup and a half of flour. This is just all-purpose flour. I'm pretty sure I got this at Aldi, too, of course. And then I'm also just gonna throw in my spices. Uh, I use this Himalayan uh, pink salt as well as pepper, some basil and some uh, onion powder, but you could throw whatever in there. Now, this seems really sort of crumbly and like it's not going to stick together as a dough, but once I turned it out onto um, a surface and kind of compressed it and kneaded it a little bit, it really came together and formed a pretty solid uh, dough. Um, gnocchi is so delicious and um, yeah, if you've never tried it, you should give it a go. Now, I've only turned it out like three or four times, um, and that seemed to be good. I like didn't want to overwork it because I didn't want them to be like too firm, I guess, but I'm not a baker. I just made that up. Um, so I cut my dough into quarters, and now I'm rolling it into a rope. I would say my rope is about half an inch, three quarters of an inch thick, and then I'm just going to use my knife. Uh, to cut them about the same, half <laughs> half an inch to three quarters of an inch. So basically you're just making these little squares. And this made a ton. Like this is just one rope and there are four chunks um, of that dough total. So they're so cute and so tiny. And now, okay, to make a perfectly professional gnocchi, you need something called a gnocchi board, 
which you can get on Amazon, I'm sure, but like who has time for that? So I just did a little YouTube search and I found out you can just roll your gnocchi right on a fork. And this will definitely not give you super professional um, looking ones, but they're more of a rustic variety. And I still think they turned out super cute and totally impressive. Like if someone came over, you were cooking dinner for someone, um, and you were like, oh, I just made this myself. Like you would look really pretty cool. So we are going to eat ours with this marinara sauce. So I'm just going to heat that up. And cooking them is super, super fast. It only takes about 60 seconds. So I'm just going to do them in small batches. And they sink to the bottom at first, but after about a minute, they all start bubbling up to the top like this. And that's how you know that they are done. And you could really get creative um, with what you put in it, what you put on it. I thought those garlic potatoes did an amazing job making these delicious. But the loaded potatoes, the cheesy potatoes, there's a lot of like variety you could do. Of course, I have to make it a little bit pretty because this might go on Instagram later. If you do not follow me on Instagram, I will leave a link in the description. Go over and check that out. And lucky Gianni got to come up for lunch and have this fresh gnocchi waiting for him. My next recipe is one of my favorites. I actually make this quite often. Um, I'm making fried fish, and I'm going to use, of course, a pouch of my powdered potatoes, some eggs, some mustard, salt and pepper, and some fish. Today I have Alaskan cod. I got all of these things at Aldi, of course. And the first thing you got to do is start heating that oil up. And um, now I'm going to throw some eggs in. I think I overshot the amount of eggs I needed here. I put four in. I probably could have gotten away with three. But who wants to make more egg solution, you know, if you're like already in the middle of frying something. So I just put some salt and pepper in my uh, egg mixture. And this is weird, but trust me. Put a little bit of yellow mustard in with your egg. I don't know why, it tastes so good and I think it also makes it stick to the fish a little bit better. I know it's weird, but trust me, it's good. So I'm just gonna give that a little beating. That sounded weird. Um, and now I'm gonna put my potatoes uh, into this little dish. I used the garlic uh, variety of my powdered potatoes. And now I'm just going to cut my fish up. I've done this a lot of different ways using different types of fish. I find that I like a smaller chunk rather than a whole filet, but this is totally personal preference. I just, I enjoy a nugget, I guess. So now I've got my like station all set up. I'm going to just test my oil by dropping a few little potato sprinkles in there to see if it bubbles. And now I'm just going to classically dip it in the egg, swap hands, and um, cover it with the potatoes. And because these are already garlic potatoes, I didn't need to season um, them with salt or pepper the way you would with breadcrumbs. Um, there's definitely enough salt in there already. And today, the cod only took a couple minutes on each side. You just want to do it till it is golden brown. This is also really good if you are a fisher person um, to do with any type of pan fish, bluegills, perch, that kind of thing. This is a really tasty idea. So this is definitely not the healthiest of meals. I am definitely frying these, but sometimes you are just in the mood for some fish and chips and you can feed your whole family really delicious fish and chips for less than it would cost for just one takeout meal. Um, so when you get the, the craving for some good greasy fish, you can totally make it yourself. And the potatoes, they're just light and crisp and super, super delicious. And what I love about this actually is that my kids totally get down on these.
my last recipe is for potato pancakes. And these are, I'm serious you guys, the best potato pancakes I have ever made, ever. I will link the recipe down below because I found it online. It's so, so good. You need garlic powder, you need pancake mix, you need of course a pouch of potatoes, some milk, some olive oil, some salt, some cheddar cheese, an egg, and half an onion. So this recipe, I needed two thirds of a cup of the potatoes mixed with one third of a cup of the pancake mix. Um, so I did have a little bit of that powdered potato left over in the packet, which wasn't ideal, but if you're using a larger box, this would totally work really well. And now I'm just gonna add um, half an onion to it and um, you don't cook the onion first or anything, you just put it in there raw, and it just adds the most delicious texture and flavor in there. I've never put like an onion like that into a potato pancake before, and oh my gosh, so, so good. I'm also just going to beat an egg real quick and add that. That, of course, is going to just bind everything together and keep it pancake-like. I am also going to add one cup of milk. Next, I'm gonna add a cup of cheddar cheese. I like to go with sharp cheddar just because it has a little bit more flavor. And if you watch my videos, you guys know that like I'm definitely partial to shredding my own instead of buying shredded cheese, but you could totally do that too. Next, I'm just going to add one tablespoon of olive oil. All right, now I'm gonna add just, well, I was gonna say a dash, but I, I put a lot in there, of some garlic powder and then some salt. You could also add uh, maybe cayenne. You could throw a jalapeno in there. This recipe is a little bit flexible. And now I'm just gonna mix it all together till I have a nice little batter. Also, you could do this the night before and pop this in your fridge. Because these are powdered potatoes, they're not going to oxidize and turn brown the way they would if you like actually shredded a potato to make a potato pancake. And who has time for that, honestly? So now I'm just going to fry them up in um, a quarter of a cup um, serving and they kind of stuck to my spatula a little bit because I didn't grease it. I found that actually flattening them with my hand worked a little bit better. But this recipe made eight pretty decently sized uh, cakes and they only took about three minutes per side um, on a medium heat. I did use the loaded potato variety to make these that had little like fake bacon pieces in them and stuff. and. They were super, super good, but I'm sure the cheddar ones or you know whatever variety you would use would be really good in this setting. Now some people like to go like sweet and do like syrup and stuff. I went savory. I'm just gonna throw some sour cream and some green onions because I think nothing looks more beautiful than those things paired together. And Gianni told me that it looked like something that he would get at a restaurant, so. I really took that praise from him. All right, you guys, those were my recipes. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope they inspired you to maybe do something different with your powdered potatoes. Obviously, everybody loves just a classic mashed potato, but you might be getting kind of sick of those, and you can really use these in a lot of great ways. If there's a way that you like to use your powdered potatoes, leave me a comment down below so that everybody can see more ideas. And yes, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.